Making games is hard, like really, really hard, even when you have a great team. My name's Luke, and I've been designing games for over 16 years. I created Fruit Ninja, Jetpack Joyride, and have shipped over a dozen other games. But I've always wanted to try the ultimate challenge, building a game all on my own. So I've quit my job. It couldn't be a better time to do it. We face skyrocketing costs and higher interest rates. Oh my gosh! Fear and panic. Oh, fuck. So, we're making a game. But how do we choose what to make? It all starts with coming up with some simple goals. Then, we can start jotting down ideas. Lots of ideas. Now that we have too many ideas, we can go back and pick just a few of the best ones to prototype. Prototyping is like a quick draft. It's a place to try things out and make mistakes. We can spend anywhere from a few days to a couple of weeks working on each of these prototypes and see which ones meet our goals the best. Which ones are the most fun? And which ones can be actually completed in a reasonable amount of time by one person who has not done any code or any art in eight years? So now we have our chosen prototype. We can go and actually make the game, and when we release it, with any luck, we make enough money to start the whole hell cycle once again. But look at this diagram. Look at how much work there is up the top of that that usually no one ever sees. So, this is the plan. I'm going to build a prototype, and you're going to watch. And watch the ads, and comment, and subscribe, and So for my first prototype, I'm doing a classic. You take game one, and game two, and you put them together and boom, it's a whole new game. I'm gonna take recent indie hit Vampire Survivors and combine it with a car combat game I made called Crash Club. I think it'll be interesting to mix the hordes of enemies with the kind of physics-y dynamics. This is all just a fancy way to say it's Vampire Survivors with cars. So to start with, let's make a quick little car just so I have something to work with. Did I mention I'm definitely not an artist? Now we just need our adorable little shitbox to drive, and there's a lot of different ways we could go about doing this. We could do something based on real physics, we could use the inbuilt physics engine in Unity, but personally, I like to just kind of hack things up, get it feeling exactly the way I want it to. In this game, I want it to be kind of drifty and playful and fun, but also you're gonna have to change directions really quickly, kind of like a dodge jump car. Okay, I think we're all set. It all should work just fine, and... Okay, nope. Maybe if I just, uh... Okay, no. This time I'm pretty sure that... Wait, what? Okay. But now I think we've got it. It's drifty, it's agile, it's pretty fun. Next up, I duplicated the car and added some AI logic using an incredibly complicated algorithm that goes something like, if target to the left, turn left. If target to the right, turn right. I mean, it's stupid, but it actually kind of works great. After updating the models and changing the background so it wouldn't go blind quite so quickly, I added a weapon that just simply shoots at the closest enemy. But the problem is most of the time it misses. The car's already moved by the time the bullet gets there. So the temporary solution for now is we just aim a little bit in front of the enemy and hey, it seems to work great for a prototype. Now we just make the enemies take damage, and when they take too much damage, they explode into a shower of golden bricks. And even though it's just a little prototype, we can pump up the jam with some really basic screen shake. It just feels so much nicer this way. After learning that I'm terrible at Blender, I added landmines. They drop behind the car and explode, dealing AOE damage. There's a really cool trick with these explosions. Again, it's just so simple and basic but if you break it down frame by frame, there's an entire mesh that is just black for two frames, then white for a couple of frames before it gets replaced with a particle effect. It's so cheesy, so simple, but it just is so effective. It's getting a bit boring just shooting the same car over and over, so how about we make a garbage truck that has heaps of health? Oh, I really need to get better at 3D modeling. The best compliment I got about this model was, I can tell it's a truck. But hey, with the truck in, menu, some hearts, we basically have a playable game now. It's already pretty fun at this point, like it's obviously very one-dimensional, there's not much to it, but it kinda has that feeling I was going for, that Crash Club meets Vampire Survivors.
Next up, I decided to experiment with the background or the setting itself. I really wanted it to be a city at this point. I thought it would be interesting if there were buildings and you had to dodge around things. And I mean, maybe there would even be upgrades and you would have to build the city as part of the meta game. I'm not sure, but at this point, I'm just experimenting with seeing what it feels like to put that in place. It also got me thinking about this idea that maybe instead of just the perks popping up when you level up, you would actually have to drive up to a casino. Like in Crash Club where you would have to actually physically drive into the shops to purchase items. So to test out this idea, I had to actually build the perks system. And this was just a bunch of menus and ideas and it's pretty simple really because most things just modify a few variables. But as soon as I put the perk system in, I realized that I don't want to make you drive to go and have to select your perk. Picking perks is just fun, and I would rather have it pop up more often and for it to be easier and more joyful for the player. At this point, it was time to tackle something that I'd been putting off the whole time, which is dealing with the camera. The problem is when people are heading down the screen, they often get confused whether they should press left or right. It's the same effect as if you're navigating on a map and heading south, and on the screen, you need to turn left. But to turn left, if you're heading south on the map, then you turn the steering wheel right. Is that right? Yeah, okay. It's confusing. It's a very real problem, and I'd encountered it before in a top-down racing game I'd made, and other friends who have made top-down games have had this too. When we built Crash Club, we just put the camera behind and had the whole view rotate around, which seems really obvious. When I tried it for this game, ah, because of that dodge em car kind of movement I was going for, the effect kind of makes you feel sick. Even when I mess with the camera and try lowering it and change different settings, it just doesn't really work for me. So for now, I'm choosing to ignore the problem. We'll deal with that later on. Now that we have the perk system in and working, I just need more things to unlock. So I started building some weapons and the first ones were just, you know, really obvious. A machine gun, a shotgun. But then I thought, hang on, the whole idea was to do weird physics-y stuff with this. So heck, let's do a mace. This was kind of a light bulb moment for me. All of a sudden the game had a wackiness about it and just felt more loose and more playful and more fun. So I think the next step now is obvious. We're adding a sword to a car. And the sword is lots of fun as well. These melee weapons are really starting to give the game its own personality and own style. And we can go further, we can combine them, and we can even add a perk where you just add even more maces to the car. It just gets crazier and wackier, and I love it. Something I really don't like though, is the way it looks. I mean, look at it. So to start, I just grab a screenshot of the game and start painting over it in Photoshop. I figure I'll try a very limited palette kind of look. This is very simple, which means as a non-artist, it seems like something I might be able to pull off. Wait, why does this look so familiar. Oh, that's why. I try out a bunch of different colour combinations, going for dark and light, but I end up settling on this green and pink look. I think it's pretty cool. So, let's get it into the game. And this is a lot nicer. Normally at the prototyping phase, I don't really worry about this, but that's because usually I'm working with a really talented artist who can do concept images and really knows how to make it look visually great in the end. I also added damage numbers because I mean, who doesn't like seeing big damage numbers pop up? And now I found myself playing the game a lot more and getting on some pretty crazy runs. Pretty clearly there needs to be some balance done to this game. But before I balanced the perks, I really had one more thing I wanted to try out. I liked the idea that maybe you could pick perks for the enemies as well. I'd seen this done in Shotgun King and thought it was such a clever idea. I thought maybe the way you would have to pick these is if we had skulls that were in the map. But they're pretty easy to avoid. So then I made the skulls follow you around. But there's kind of a weird thing where if you're going around the outside of the map, the skulls kind of end up just drifting around in the center and you either get none of them or like all of them all at once. So I just made them high value cursed perks where you would get something really good, but you'd be taking a big risk by getting a curse as well. 
At this point, I feel like I'm basically finished with the prototype, but look at this video. Like, oh my God, look at it. It's a monster. And so how am I supposed to finish this? I, I guess I'll just do everything I need to do to make it so I can release the game so you can play it at the end. Does that make sense? This is crazy. I hope you enjoyed that 70 second montage because it was 45 hours of work to do. <sighs> I have no idea why I thought that would be easier than coming up with a different way to end the video, but hey, on the upside, Sir Truck exists now. Like, overall, I'm pretty happy with the game. The game is fun. It really is hordes of enemies, explosions, picking perks. It's like vampire survivors with cars, I guess. It's great. I particularly like squeezing through small gaps in the enemies. The different kinds of builds you can have where it might be better to be reversed instead of drive around forward. There's some good stuff here. Is it perfect? No, not by a long shot. It could use extra weapons, enemies, a balance pass or three or four. There's a lot of problems, but I think for a prototype, it's more than done enough. There's a whole nother video here somewhere about analyzing the prototype and figuring out if it's a good fit for market and whether I should move it into production. But at least for now, I just wanna see what you think. So check out the description below. There's a link there. You can play the game for free in your browser right now. And hey, thanks very much. Am I supposed to have like a catchphrase that ends or something? I spent about a month working on this, which is way too long, but hey, hopefully it entertains and maybe educates a few people, so we'll just see. I would love for you to subscribe, comment, like, all that jazz, do the same on itch, and hopefully I'll see you again very soon.